Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing another deck profile here for dinosaurs. So this is a very different build from the previous one that we did a few weeks back. Uh, this one here is focusing more so around the new Transcendosaurus cards plus a bit more of a fusion engine going on with this particular deck. Now I am still missing the one card, the Xenomorphic uh, Evolution, uh, but that's mainly because you straight up just can't find that card, but the card itself is also just going for around 50 or $60 each as well, and you do need two copies in this particular deck to work, but uh, that being said, I will technically be proxying in this particular build here because it's not really a deck I take out to play seriously anyways, so if you're taking it out to a locals, most of the time the players there are kind enough to at least let you proxy the cards and I often find myself proxying those two cards anyway um, or rather that one card but at the two copies uh, just because everyone kind of knows that it's hard to get plus it's really expensive as well. That's pretty much all I wanted to preface. That being said though if you guys enjoyed this particular video definitely drop a like, share, comment and subscribe. It really does help out with this channel but with that being said let's begin. So, starting off the cards here for at least the new ones, we are going to be going with the Transcendosaurus uh, Meteorus. Now, this card could technically be played at 2. The only issue I have with this particular card over something like the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is mainly the fact that this requires you to destroy two other dinosaurs in your hand and or field to special summon this out. I think it's a slightly weaker type of thing where you kind of already have to destroy your other resources in the hand to get going now in a sense yes if you're destroying something like your baby cerasaurus or your petite pteranodon you're going to be benefiting incredibly well off that however there's no guarantees you're not always going to have those in your hand so what if you have other dinos destroying them isn't really going to help so because of that i do find this card to be a bit iffy i think it's really good i just don't think it's going to be as amazing as the ultimate conductor which is ultimately still going to be your primary boss monster here uh no pun intended so yeah, with that being said, two copies of the Ultimate Conductor. I believe last time I did play three copies and that was mainly for me wanting to sort of try out the Meteor Rust. I still think Meteor Rust is good by the way because it's utilizing such a different engine in this particular deck. But I guess only time will tell as to uh, which actually performs a lot better for this particular deck. The only other boss monster we're really playing is the Mighty Dino King Rex. Now this card is not a mandatory card at all. Uh, it's completely up to you whether or not you want to play it. But it does technically give you the potential for a second attack. And it also is capable of targeting up to two of your opponents, two monsters that they control and destroying them. Now, even if it is a target, it's still something that can definitely really benefit you. And uh, just having all these beefy monsters out on the board is uh, just adding so much more to what this deck is. Of course, I'm still gonna be playing the two copies of Overtex. Overtex is still one of the best cards in this deck. Uh, being out on the field, it's a negate, but it also just gets you your evolution pills, which is actually going to be more important in this particular build as well, since we're playing four different, well, we're playing four copies of an evolution pill. So yeah, it's going to be really relevant. Uh, the Soul Eating Overraptor, it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. Uh, the Arcosaur, also really self-explanatory. Uh, three copies of the Baby Cerasaurus and two copies of Petite Pteranodon. Uh, still the ratios I kind of want to go with and we kind of have to keep it at that minimal amount just because we need the space for other cards out there as well. One ofs, we're still going to be playing the Giant Rex, we're still going to be playing the Michelaniosaurus and we are still also going to be playing the Drac Aolo as well. However, a bit of a new addition to this particular deck, which is not necessarily a new card, it's just the card that happens to synergize with the deck and that is going to be the Dino Wrestler Pancratops. Pancratops is a really interesting card because it 
was the cart that was originally uh, used as a as a main in the deck in a way like sort of like similar to Phantasme I mean who remembers Phantasme right so Pancratops kind of had that sort of legacy going on and it just suddenly got forgotten you know no one played it anymore it was played in decks beyond just the dinosaur deck as well so I realized that you know what playing it in this particular deck it does help out it does work uh, just because it can be searched out and it can do stuff so yeah I'm adding it into this particular deck as well and I th think I brought it up last time as well uh, in the previous deck profile where I said the formats now struggle so much to deal with uh, decks that are focusing on so much beefy monsters and Pancratops alone is 2600 you'll find that so many decks actually struggle to get over 2600 so it's definitely a really interesting dynamic that this card brings to this particular deck uh, but that being said I'm still playing the Doggeran as well absolutely great cards just to deal with the pesky big stuff like all right so now for some new cards we're going to be playing here two copies of Xeno Media Rest so obviously uh, the Xeno is its own thing as well a bit of a sub archetype in itself that's why there's the whole uh, Xeno Evolution card which sadly very expensive card and very difficult to find as well um, but yeah, this particular card here is mainly, or rather this particular engine, focuses on level 6s, which I guess I'll bring them all out right now. So we have here the Dino King Rex as well, not necessarily focusing on the Xeno archetype, but more so supporting the whole level 6s. Uh, it just special summons itself on its own if you control no monsters, so that's an additional level 6 out on the board. And uh, that's to either go for your rank 6 plays, either go for your fusion plays, or anything like that. But still being able to extend themselves really easily. Now the deck does require you to have at least one normal monster. In this particular case, the um, Protosaurus actually works incredibly well. Well, Frostosaurus, sorry, I just misread that. But uh, yeah, Frostosaurus, it being a level 6 is really important as well. Just being able to uh, help you go for your XCs plays, which is definitely really relevant. Uh, next up we're also going to be playing here two copies of the doodle beast uh, stego this card is a really fun card firstly it is a dinosaur card so it synergizes uh, really helps you go for your synchro plays with your drac aolo uh, but at the same time it also just adds uh, your doodle book cards as well which is uh, definitely uh, really fun you know and it also allows you to cycle out cards from your hand as well so that really just fuels your graveyard with the uh, necessary cards to keep your plays going. The last of the two cards we're playing is not actually a dino card, but it's called uh, Dino Base. Now, I don't know if many people know about this particular card. This card essentially allows you to fusion summon one of your fusion monsters uh, using cards you control and other monsters from either your hand or field as the material so i think this card is absolutely amazing and we'll get more to the fusions once we get to it but dino base itself allows you to go for your fusion plays without having to play uh polymerizations or super polys in your deck and instead is acting here as a monster plus it can special summon itself out really easily as well and that's kind of what we like we don't want to be normal summoning all the time we want to be able to special summon so onto the spells we're playing two copies here of lost world still uh i don't really think we need to play three copies this deck has such a different focus but hey it's all subjective right everyone has their own builds so in this case lost world is what i'm preferring to play at two copies of uh, three copies of Fossil Dig, you just can't change it. It's just so good in this particular deck. And we're playing two Double Evolution Peels. But that being said, I am playing also the new card. This is the Beta Evolution Peel Ultra Transcendence. This is just a fun card to play. It's not as good as Double Evolution Peel being able to bring out such a more powerful monster. But that being said though, the Beta Evolution Peel still is able to bring out... Um, some pretty beefy monsters out there it's just that it unfortunately does not ignore summoning conditions so if there are cards that straight up just can't be special summoned 
then you're going to have to rely on your double evolution pill for that. Uh, but that being said, it adds so much more versatility with double evolution pill obviously having the hard ones per turn uh, drawback. Uh, one of the cards I'm trying out is going to be Jurassic Power. I don't necessarily think this card is as necessary in the deck, therefore I feel like this is the card that you could take out to add in your uh, Xenomorphic uh, Evolution, which is going to be a lot better in this particular deck. Uh, same thing applies for the Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn is a fantastic extender, but you don't really need that. I feel like the Monster Reborn can actually be taken out going for your Xenomorphic Evolution. Uh, called by the Grave to kind of like uh, end things off there. But as for the Trap Guards, I'm going to be playing here the Doodle Book, which is a really fun card. Uh, Stegosaur obviously searches this card out, uh, but this kind of gives you a bit more... I guess a bit more further extensions, all the while kind of like dealing with what your opponent has. The level 6 engine that we're playing in this particular build is a bit slower, and so sometimes you kind of have to delay things for a bit. Having this particular card helps out, uh, but that being said, you only need one in this deck. And finally, we're playing the one copy of the Super Soaring as well to end things off with the main deck. Uh, this is just a really... A versatile card given that you're playing ultimate conductor tyranno being able to bring back your cards that have been banished just really can change things up but similar case the monster reborn it's not a necessity so you can easily take that out put in the uh, xenomorphic evolution instead all right so on with the extra deck we're going to be playing the one eva zalagia the dolka tornado dragon castell I'm playing the uh, Hyperiton and the Jormungand as well. These cards were featured in the previous deck profile already, so I'm not going to go over them. Uh, you guys would pretty much know their relevance already. Um, we're mainly going to be trying to focus on the newer cards, uh, just because they're so much more interesting uh, to kind of like talk about in this particular case. We have relinquished Arnima still, and we still have some of the, uh, I guess the main synchros i did take out the leo uh, just because this deck kind of focuses more on the level 6 xc's uh, but that being said though can definitely still be possible as is um, in this case the glaciosaurus is kind of like more of that priority that we're going with here we just want to bring out beefy monsters uh, so in the form of either Synchros, Fusions, or Xyz. Of course, we have here Giganto Zowler, uh, also a fantastic card here. Obviously, it requires that normal monster, so in this particular case, you do need that Frostosaurus. But uh, it's not the main fusion that we're going for here. The main fusions is actually the Dynatanks. Playing two Dynatanks here, obviously, I believe it was Dynabase that we were talking about earlier. Uh, one Machine Monster, one Dinosaur Monster. Allowing you to go for this particular card is so crazy i mean this card is it's just been a really fun card technically it's a machine card but it is also a dinosaur card as well uh, but mainly speaking though it does gain attack equal to the original attack of the dinosaur monster used for its fusion summon very powerful of course if you're using ultimate conductor tyranno but it's also one of the big reasons why I'm playing so many big beaters in this particular deck because I always want to see them or at least I want to see at least one of them in my hand with the Dyna base to be able to make uh, the most out of the Dyna tank here. So yeah this card is just a really amazing card because uh, in a sense it is a bit of a um, further disruption that adds more versatility to it. So when a card or effect is activated that targets this one card on the field and no other cards as a quick effect, you can target one other card on the field that would be an appropriate target and that card or effect now targets that new card. So it's really fun in the way that it's able to save your opponents trying to pop one of your cards, which very common, you know, it's very common these days. Um, when you're dealing with cards like um, Salamangrate Rage that can pop your cards, it can be quite pesky, it could be quite annoying. So why not redirect that to perhaps your, I don't know, to perhaps your Baby Zerosaurus or your Petit Pteranodon. Your opponent's likely not going to bother trying to pop 
those particular cards because they don't want things to trigger off so in this case you have Dyna Tank here but that being said though having Dyna Tank out on the board itself is acting almost like a deterrent for your opponent so definitely really amazing uh, similar case though we're going to be playing the Granosaurus Giga Cannon also a really great card um, that's the Transcendosaurus uh, Drilly Nathus is uh, another great card that I commonly am now going into as well with this particular deck. So, as long as this card has no materials, if it does battle a monster, any damage that it inflicts to your opponent is now doubled. It cannot end games, but it definitely will bring you very close to that. So, that is going to be really fun there. Now, you do need to have no materials. So, what do you do with that? Well, there are some detach effects with this. So, by detaching one material from this card, you can target one of your banished dinosaur monsters and special summon it. And then if this card is destroyed, you can also special summon, well, you can shuffle one of your normal monsters from your graveyard into your deck, and then special summon this card. So that's essentially the idea as to how to get the benefits out of this particular card here. It's such a good card, it's so simple, every single one of the effects, but it does so much more than you might think for this particular deck. So ultimately the two cards I find myself going into for the extra deck is the uh, is these two particular cards here. That and of course the uh, main big beat sticks in our main deck as well. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, this is an incredibly fun build. This was something that was uh, definitely a weird turn for dinosaurs but it's uh, up to you on how you want to build this particular deck so I do hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile I found it to be uh, incredibly fun and I am looking forward to building uh, more variations to this deck as well but that being said thank you so much for joining me today I hope you'll have a fantastic day I'll see you all next time